Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you to everyone that subscribed, liked, shared and so forth. This is a short video just on uh, the topic of the visual metaphor that we're building throughout the series. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things. Now in the musical scale, the Western musical scale, which has 12 notes, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, 12 notes. There's two that are not, that Barden does not put in his book, and that is the E and the A sharp. It's more just a nice to know, okay? Um, but what I've put here is, is I've created a bit of a, a bit of a dial, a bit of a machine on a wall. And let's say, you know, you go, okay, I want to practice the letter K. Well, what note does what does Barden associate? Well, he puts the note of B there, okay? Now, you might not see it on here, but if you look in the book, it is. So what I'm going to do is, is that I'm going to turn, click, click to the letter B. Now, this supposes that I already have within me the ability to access the letter B. Sorry, the musical note of B, which is... Um, in this case, approximately 121 hertz. Now, also, I can just grab my guitar and I can play the note of B as well. And if I'm really switched on, I'll be able to find it within myself through my, um, my, my own development of an understanding of recalling pitch. That's a much trickier conversation. Won't go into it here. But what I'll say is this, is that once we have uh, gone through the notes of the musical alphabet and we have learned to tune ourselves so that we can reproduce that tone reasonably cleanly, steadily. When I say reasonably cleanly, it means that we may be a bit left and right of the tone. We may be wavering while we adjust our ability to sort of latch onto it and hold it. Much like how when we tune into the feeling of life force, we hold it, we maintain our gaze on it or our awareness of it without, you know, losing it, so to speak. So what we're trying to do here is to be able to go through the whole alphabet, that um, musical alphabet, and to be able to easily tune into each tone and know when it's outside outside of our um, achievable range. Maybe it's too low and, you know, it's too hard. It's not good for us to, you know, to go places that we're uh, unable to because we can hurt ourselves. We, we can expand our range a little bit, but there's some places that we're really not designed to go. And uh, if we push ourselves too much, we can hurt ourselves too. And so maybe instead of down here, we can't get it here. We're just out of the range. Maybe we can find it up here. But as we go through the, um, some of the training, we will be expanding our range as well. And, you know, this will open more doors for opportunity. And there's many overflowing benefits to learning how to vocalize, essentially, um, or sing, hold notes, tone. Um, we can use it for chanting. Um, it's for breath work. It's for holding a steady tone easily for a long duration being able to move it and modulate it, all these types of things. And so, yeah, but initially, this little device here, this, like I said, this presumes that I've got all these notes loaded into my machine. I'm familiar with them, just like I'd have all the colors locked in and I can just flick between them. So this is, like I said, just the visual metaphor of like, okay, when I want to do the letter K, I switch to the note of B. I can produce that tone nice and cleanly, and I can also move a little bit left and right of it to see if there's a, it locks in or it latches on to the energy with that particular pole, uh, you know, cleaner. Because what I found is, is that even mentally with the colors, you know, you're you're holding an image of maybe one what one of the authors or commenters or teachers has presented, 
whether it's Mr. Barden or someone who teaches his, his method. And you, you might get a slightly different sort of like experience of what the color looks like. What somebody says is red, you might be more like, well, actually, that's a wine red or that's a fiery orange red type of thing. And so this is going to be some the ability to um, understand the common reference points that are provided to us in the book and by other teachers and then learn how to become flexible and move left and right a little bit of those designated sort of markers so that we can find the sweet spot of, oh, there it is there. It sits nicely there. Now, what if that changes? Well, we've still got that um, flexibility of being able to move between tones and be able to um, essentially, like I said, move a bit left and right so that if anything changes, we can just we can explore. Like I said, it's like finding a, a radio station with an old dial um, on a car stereo. A lot of people probably won't have that today, but you would turn it and then you'd hear the, the radio station and it'd be a bit crackly and then you fine tuned it and then it locked in nice, clean, clear signal. And that's what we're looking for. Now, obviously, some of the, the, uh, the Barden letters, the KTQ letters, are a little more percussive sounding and tonality underlying them may not be so important you know for example the letters t and k which are some would exp uh, you know describe as being sort of explosive or what i would term as being almost percussive t -t 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 -k 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 -k. you know there are ways to um, add tonality to them e.g but i'm not sure how necessary that is um, because they, it seems to be very, a very simple thing already. So, but, um, just being able to explore tonal flexibility within any produced voicing or sound, it's not a bad skill to have. So, uh, you know, some of these are going to be, I think some of the letters in my own experience, uh, don't require as much flexibility as others. We're provided with general guidelines, and even Mr. Barden himself says that, you know, musical knowledge is not that crucial. However, however, we're taking an intelligent approach to this. We're stripping things back to understand them. This is fattening out uh, a, a, a knowledge base that assists with this process, and yet, it also, we might find, assists us in other areas of our lives. Being confident with your ability to project sound, what I've noticed is from being a music teacher and being, becoming a singer over time, is that it's dramatically increased my confidence as a public speaker. And also, uh, it's taught me how to adjust my vocal presentation depending on the room that I'm in. So I read the room and go, I'm in a small room with a small bunch of people, so I don't need to speak really loud and project a lot. I can come down to a nice, comfortable sitting volume. Whereas if I'm in a larger room and I need oops, I need to express myself a little bigger and wider, then I can project a bit more. But I, I generally know my comfortable sort of area of operation. And I think to that confidence you know it's uh it's a valuable sort of like trait to have and it's a transferable one it translates over into other areas of our lives so yeah but anyway uh, i do go on please uh let me know your thoughts underneath the video and any questions please like share subscribe all those good things and um thank you so much i'll see you on the next video